All right then, gang. So now we've made all of the basic CRUD endpoints for the API to create, read, update, and delete data from the database. Awesome. Now there's one more thing I want to do for this API, and that's to implement some simple pagination for the get request for all of the books. Because if we had a thousand books, then we probably wouldn't want to get all of them back at once as a response, but rather get a certain amount of them at a time, like 20, for example. Then I could just list those 20 books on a page. And if a user wanted to see more, they could click on a button to request more, and we'd ask MongoDB for the next 20 and so forth. So that's kind of what we're going to try and achieve in this lesson, but without the UI and the front end and the button. And the way we're going to do this is by using query parameters in the endpoint URL. So for example, if I wanted to get the first page of book documents, I could add on a query parameter to the endpoint for all the books. And that parameter could be called pages or just P for short if you want. And we'd set that query parameter equal to a page number. Now, in my case, I'm going to start at zero, which would essentially get us the first initial page of results. And if I wanted the next page, I'd change that value to one, then two for the next lot, etc. So this is how the request is going to look. But then how do we handle that in the API on the back end? Well, it's pretty simple to get a query parameter value in an Express application. All we need to do is access it from the request object. So I'm going to create a constant right here called page. And then I'm going to set that equal to request dot query to access a query parameter and then whatever the parameter was called. Now, in our case, that was P, so I can say dot P. But if you called it something else like page, then it would be dot page instead. And this is going to get us the value or the page that's being requested. Now, it might be the case that whoever is making the request doesn't pass along a query parameter for the page. And in that case, I want it to default to zero to get the first page of results. So to do that, I can add a logical or, which is two pipe symbols, after this bit right here. And then after that, I'm going to add a zero. And this means, look, if the request query parameter P doesn't have a value, then the value of the page constant should be zero instead. Now, if this parameter does have a value, then the page constant will ignore this logical or, and the value will be whatever the parameter is, okay? All right, so now we have what page of results we want to fetch. What next? Well, the next thing to do is decide how many books per page should be sent back. This could be 10, 20, 30, or whatever else that you decide, all right? For our sake, I'm going to set this to three because we don't have many documents. And I want to be able to demonstrate several pages in the tutorial. So most likely your documents per page is going to be bigger than that. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll choose three. So make a variable to store the books per page in and set it equal to whatever number you choose. So three in my case. All right. So next up, we need to implement this kind of pagination in the query that we sent to MongoDB. So how do we do that? Well, we can use a combination of two different methods. We can use the skip method, first of all, to skip a certain amount of books. And then also we can use the limit method to limit how many books we get back. So imagine we have three books per page, for example, right? And we want to get the second page. So imagine that this is one, the value of this is one then what we would want to do is skip the first three books. Does that make sense? So we would use the skip method to skip the number of books that we want to skip, which would be the page times the books per page. So if the page is one multiplied by this, that would be three. We want to skip three books and then we want to fetch the next three, the next page of books. So then we would use a limit and set that to be three to say only fetch three books. Does that make sense? So let's come down here and let's implement these two methods. The first one I'm going to use is the skip method, which allows us to skip a certain amount of books. And the amount of books we want to skip is the page, whatever this value is right here. So that could be zero, one, two, three, etc., And then times that by the books per page. Now, in our case, that's three, but in your case, it could be 10 or something else. And what that would do is skip basically a certain amount of pages of results. So if it was page three that we're on, then it would be three times three. So we'd skip the first nine books and then we'd get the next lot of books after that because we want to skip the first three pages. Does that make sense? 
So after skip, we want to then also limit the amount of books we get back, and that is going to be how many books we have per page. So three in my case. So I'm going to say dot limit, and then pass through that variable, which is books per page. And by the way, when this is zero to begin with, when p is equal to zero, then this skip right here is just going to be zero, because zero times three is nothing. So we don't skip any. And that's why we get the first lot of results when this is zero, OK? We still get three right here. We're still limiting it to the first three books. All right, so that's all we really need to do. So now let's save this and give it a whirl. All right then, so right now, if we click on send to this get request right here for all the books, and we're not passing through any kind of query parameter, then remember that p variable should default to three. So we should only see three results right here. So let's move this up. And if we scroll down, we can see one, and the next one, two, and the next one, three, and that's it. Awesome, so it's just fetching the first three. And this would be the same if we set p equal to zero. So let's send that, and it should be the same three, like this, okay? So that's the first page of results. Now, if I do the second page where p equals one, then it's gonna skip these three right here, and it's gonna start at the next one and get me three more, only this time, because I think I've only got five books in the database collection, it's only gonna get me two. So if I click send, then we can see one book, and two books right here. These are the next two books. If I had more, it would show three. And then if this went to two, it would show more. But in my case, this is going to be an empty array because we don't have enough books. But you can try adding more books into your database and then adding more pages, p equals three, four, etc. And this is going to get them in batches of three, essentially. And this would be much better if you had a lot of documents and you didn't want to fetch them all at once, but you only wanted to list maybe 10 per page or something like that, and then the user can click between the pages and you only need to fetch the data when a user wants to see that page of results.